Hello everyone, this is Joel and today we're looking at our writing sentences. This is the book we'll be using, uh, Writing Sentences, The Basics of Writing Student Book uh, by Dorothy E. Zemak. It's a great book, I suggest that you buy it um, and you can find that online um, or maybe check out a copy in a library. So let's get started. You may remember that the other day I uh, we talked about um, a and an. So remember to use a or an in front of a singular noun, even if there is an adjective in front of it. Don't use a or an in front of plural words. And some words in English can't be singular or plural. Don't use a or an in front of these words. So this is on page 39 of the book. We're not going to be doing all of um, the book. We're just going to be sort of cherry picking bits and pieces which are useful for us because we're going to be writing essays and reports in class. I've got these sentences here using the, these rules. Um, and you should pause the video and have a look at that or have a look in your book. So hopefully you've looked at that now and you've corrected the mistakes. And if you've done that, you should have something like this. All right, back to the um, page 40 of the book. And we've got these articles, a, an, or zero article. So what's the answer for this? I have a new sister. She's very pretty. She has a small body and a big head. She has big brown eyes, but she doesn't have much hair. She has tiny hands and cute little fingers. She has soft skin and a nice smile. I love my babies. I don't know why they didn't put an N in there, which is a pity. Um, but, so this is a fairly basic activity, um, but hopefully it was a good little bit. So this was the video that I made before about articles and determiners, and you're welcome to check that out. And um, if you like that video, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up to date with things that I've been making. We're talking about marking nouns. So we talked about articles and determiners before, a, uh, an, and the. But also there is this and that, these and those, right? So remember that an is before a vowel. Now, it's not the vowel as it's written, but how it sounds. So words like hour and x-ray and MBA, they start with vowels actually. So x-ray actually starts with an E. MBA starts with an E, right? Hour actually starts with an O. So just be aware of that. And then also words like university and European. That starts with a Y consonant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just be wary of that when you're uh, looking at those ah uh, and articles. So ah uh, and this and that are used before singular nouns. These and those are used before plural nouns. And the uh is used before singular and plural nouns. Like I mentioned in my video, an adjective can become between the noun marker and the noun, right? And in this case, the a uh or an will depend on the first letter of the word that follows it, not the noun. So if you put an adjective there, you connect it to the first letter of the adjective. Okay, so. Page 12, we've got some practice here. You're supposed to underline the noun and circle the correct word. 
So have a look at that and stop the video to have a think if you need the time. And hopefully you've done that by now and you've replayed the video and these are the answers. How'd you go? We've got some spelling here. Um, and so we've got school, classroom, student, teacher, English, coach. I actually thought this might've been course. It's a bit difficult sometimes. Learn, teach, studying, skipped. One of my students in class said Skyped. <laughs> I guess it could be that as well if you, depends. Said and train. Parts of speech. So um, usually we talk about eight parts of speech, which, which are nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections. Okay, so we can see nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs here, and some of the um, suffixes that you can use to identify them. Um, bearing in mind, ing can be a gerund as well. Um, and we'll go into parts of speech more detail in another video, perhaps, but just to, to remind you, interjections are words like wow which are used to express emotion. Some people say there are nine or 10 parts of speech. They include the article and determiners and quantifiers. So usually these things are included under adjectives, but they are special kinds of adjectives. So in the eight parts of speech model, those two things are adjectives. However, um, if you wanted to use a 10 parts of speech model, they get their own category. So I thought this uh, story was was great. I thought it was quite funny. I love it. There's a $12 billion to do to develop a new pen and uh, 10 years and the Russians use it. Fantastic. So here's the answers for that. This was good. It fits in well with our labeling maps. And in your workbook, you've got um, some activities regarding labeling diagrams uh, and maps. And it's really the same thing. It's just the arrow points to the thing. And it could be a map. It could be a picture of a butterfly. And you've got to label the, the, the parts of the body of the butterfly or whatever, or, the, or a machine, or whatever it is, the arrow points to the thing, and then the part, uh, th this line here is where you write what it is. So hopefully you've got these words in the boxes, and these words in the boxes, and you've put them in here, and you've got something like this, All right? And if you're having problems with north and south, east, west, you need to um, check it out, remembering that we've got these cross quarters. Next, we're going to have a look at have and the to be verb, which is on page 41. And remember the be is with a noun that can mean that uh, the noun is the same thing. So she is a baby, or it can be used to describe the subject and tell where the subject is. We use have with body parts that belong to the subject. So big brown eyes, soft skin. So looking at that, we've got these um, activities here. Maya, she is in my math class. In this picture, she has long hair, but now she has short hair. I think the short hair is cute. She seems shy, but she is friendly. She is smart 
and she is a good friend. This is Ian. He is an exchange student from New Zealand. He has big hands and he has long fingers. He is very he is a very good guitar player. He has short brown hair and a kind face. He is tall and thin. Who has pretty hair? Greta. I think she is beautiful. She has long red hair and green eyes. She has nice skin, a small nose and small ears. She is tall too, but she is not very nice. I don't know why. Okay, so that's the answers for that. Thinking class, we were talking about she had long hair, but remember it's saying in this picture, she has long hair. So I'm still not using the past tense because we're talking about in the picture. And in this picture, she still has long hair, even though right now she doesn't. In the picture, she does. Okay, there's a spelling review. Um, and we can you can go through that in class and I'll check your answers. And lastly, it's a little, it's to be honest with you, it's a little bit childish with these pictures, but I guess they're just trying to give you some different things to to talk about. So we have uh, the have and be uh, that we talked about before. You're going to write sentences. So if you feel like you need more practice with this sort of thing, you can write sentences using have, has, and is. All right. So have a go with that. And if you want to talk about that later, that's fine. So these are my references. This is the book. Check it out. This is my video. Feel free to check that out as well. Thanks for listening and I hope you're enjoying these videos and I will see you in class. Bye bye.